Hey, gentlemen, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for this devotional. Now, before we dive in today, I want to encourage you to go to the link below. Check out our fall men's retreat. It's coming. Fall is around the corner. I know summer is coming to an end. But as it does, I'm looking for some volunteers and some people to help out still. Also with that, if you're looking for materials to share with your guys about this event, you can grab them from us. We will mail to you at no charge to you materials that you can use to promote this event at your church or with your pastor or with your men. So write to us below. But with that, let's dive into our devotional. We are in Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 12 through 16. It says, because of this. So what's the this? We got to remember that Nebuchadnezzar is a little hacked off because he's had a dream and he wants an interpretation of the dream, but he just doesn't want an interpretation of the dream. He wants someone to tell him what the dream is that he had, this private dream that he has, but no one's willing to do this for him because they think it's impossible. So because of this, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, was angry and very furious. So not just a little angry, this guy is on a rampage. And he commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. How about that? So the decree went out and the wise men were about to be killed and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them, obviously, as well. Then Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He declared to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree of the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the matter known to Daniel and Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation to the king. You know, what I think is interesting about this section is Daniel's response to the issue. He has just gotten word on this whole situation, and I actually expect Daniel to be terrified. Terrified by the king's rampage, the orders given to Arioch, and the life threatening stress of the present moment. But the text doesn't seem to suggest that Daniel was overly concerned. Uh, We kind of know he was, but not overly concerned. In fact, it conveys this unusual confidence for a young teenage man. Remember, Daniel's a teenager. So Daniel approaches the matter, it says, with prudence and discretion. And then he asks for an appointment with the king, even though he doesn't know the dream or its interpretation. Keep that in mind. He sets an appointment before he actually knows what the dream is or the interpretation of that dream. Fellas, I think this is the uncomfortable thing about faith in God. It's this moment right here. You see, faith precedes present answers, doesn't it? And sometimes the action of faith will actually put us in harm's way. As we see here, Daniel didn't know the outcome of this whole thing. He didn't even know the dream or the interpretation of the dream. Yet he took a step of faith and he set up a meeting with an angry king and he put himself out there believing that his God was greater than all other gods and that God would prove himself. You know, Daniel's responsibility here was just simply to act in faith, nothing more. And he understood that God could prove himself. But what about you? Are you a man who lives by faith? Faith that is actually willing to put yourself in harm's way without knowing all the answers? Gentlemen, at some point, we are all tested just like Daniel was here. And when this moment comes, we we get this choice. It's the option to make a safe choice or to make a dangerous one. It's the opportunity to trust in ourselves or to turn to faith in God. And when a miracle is needed, it's best to remember that faith precedes present answers. But this motivation is not an attempt to put God to the test or try to manufacture some miracle. Instead, it's just simply living by faith and letting God do what he does best, provide impossible solutions to impossible problems. So guys, whatever it is you're facing today, put your faith in God. And remember, it might put you in harm's way, but that's the only way you're ever going to see God work and see a true miracle. I love you guys. 
Be blessed today. Share this with someone you know who needs a miracle today. And I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.